We got this here prime driver taking a break in the fuel island. So we're going to find out who this is and call him out. Going on YouTube, driver. Going on YouTube. Oh, shit. That's one of my trucks. What's up guys, Eric here, Driveline World's Okay Steering Wheel Holder. Um, yeah, I am actually taking a break in Fuel Island. I'm the only one here in Fuel Island. This TA's got, uh, I don't know, it's probably 15 Fuel Islands. I'm the only one here. And I don't even need a break. I'm literally just wasting time. I've only taken 40 minutes off my, my 14 hour clock. Um, and I only have 120 miles to go, but here's, here's the problem. I got to Blue Beacon this morning. It's currently uh, 0300. I'm gonna get to this guy truck, so just hold on. Uh, but I th figured there would be a line, and there was nobody, nobody. I was like, damn it! Like this is the. I, I actually needed there to be a line at Blue Beacon for once, and there wasn't one. Um. Uh, so I got right in there. Got my tractor washed. I haven't had my tractor washed since I was in Florida, since a hurricane. That's how long it's been, that's ridiculous. Uh, but I had to get a washout. And so now what my problem is, is I don't wanna to get to the loves that I'm going to today uh, too early because there won't be any good parking. So I got I need to kill a little bit of time. Uh, but I can kill time anywhere. If it gets busy right here in a few islands, I'll move. Um, anyway, this guy trucks. This guy trucks, uh, he's good at trolling. He's good at trolling. And uh, like Bonehead Trucker says, if you like that kind of garbage, head on over to his channel and subscribe. Just this guy trucks. I'm pretty sure most of you know who he is. Uh, I happen to like that kind of garbage. And thus I'm subscribed to his channel, which brought up uh, his video last night before I left or this morning before I left where uh, he's kind of you know taking taking a piss on some prime drivers youtubers um, and he right you know he's got a lot of interesting things to say and I've got some advice for you this guy trucks because I know you're subscribed to my channel you and I've talked uh, back and forth we can get on the phone one of these days but uh, I know you've dropped into my lives now and then. Uh, so I know you're going to see this. Uh, but I, I got some advice for you. So just hang out for a minute. Uh, um, I want to kind of attack a part of your video. Uh, and maybe you know this. But this is, this is more... Um, I don't take any issue with most of your video. In fact, I don't take any issue with any of your video. I think it's funny. Um, unlike the Kool-Aid Club at Prime, uh, I actually, you know, I mean, just go look at my last few videos. I'm pretty brutally construct. I try to be constructive, but I'm pretty brutally honest um, about Prime from my perspective. I do not hold back. Um, I pretty fearlessly just tell everyone like it is. So, you know, I'm not one of the Kool-Aid Club. I know the Kool-Aid Club you're talking about. And I'll tell you this, this guy trucks, if you think it's bad seeing the Kool-Aid Club on YouTube with Prime, you should meet some of the people who don't have YouTube channels from Prime. And I'm talking about the Facebookers, the mouth breathers. Um, there are some just nasty prime apologists out there uh that if you say anything critical about prime you're enemy number one and that doesn't matter if you're a prime driver or not trust me trust me <laughs> so now i know what you're doing and i think it's smart um obviously 
prime drivers okay here's i'll say this to the to the mouth breather prime drivers you know who you are if you leave comments on anyone's channel be that my channel this guy trucks wild beard any of those and you're trying to lash out at that youtuber uh, the chances are, if they're good at what they're doing, they're just gonna take your comment and use it to make content. I've done it many times, and those are some of my best performing videos too. The ones where I'll just read off some stupid BS a, a comment and then go after it are the ones that do really well. So all you're doing is giving them content. Um, so anyway, he's pointing out again, go watch the video. Uh, this today is the 27th. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll link it down in, uh, I'll link it in the comments or description. It'll be, it'll be one or the other. Um, but he's talking about prime drivers coming after him and I've seen it in his comments and he's, he's right. It does happen. Um, I don't take issue again. I don't take issue with any of the video. What I want to say real quick and this isn't to this guy trucks. This is just to the broader general public. There is an emotional attachment to Prime within the Prime driver community. I will acknowledge that. Um, and I want to real quick, because he's basically, from the outside looking in, it's kind of cultish, uh, for sure. And I can only look from inward outward because I've been pulling for, I'm almost at a million safe miles with Prime. So my perspective is from the inside out. Um, I'm not someone who, you know, like I, yes, most Prime, most Prime YouTubers, with the exception of maybe five of us, most Prime YouTubers just come and go. And that's why I don't promote other Prime YouTubers anymore. I don't mention other Prime YouTubers um, because I've helped Prime YouTubers build their channels and then they're gone within you know six months or a year. It they come and go. I've seen it happen for you know five plus nearly six years. Um, so he's right that you're gonna you see these cycles of Prime drivers. You'll see them, especially the ones that can't hang through the valleys. And they, they just expect there to just be mountains all the time. They, they can't hang through the valleys. So you'll see the cycle of prime drivers who come in, they get on YouTube, they go through a year or two. Oh, we're making money, it's great. And then boom, when it gets really tough, they hang the hat, they go and bitch on YouTube, then they hang the hat and they're gone. Uh, and then this new batch comes in and there's all these new YouTubers, prime YouTubers and all of a sudden they're making more money than they've ever made and it's just cycles you know it's just cycles so it, he is right about that he's absolutely right about that but i do want to real quick and again i'm going to give some advice here <laughs> from one troll to another uh i do want to say something about the the prime connection to the emotional connection that is seems to be uniquely prime and i want to say it from an insider's perspective and again this is not to this guy trucks he probably don't care but just generally if you're ever curious as to why prime drivers are probably more emotionally connected or um passionate about prime you have to understand um, that Prime has one of the longest, most grueling training programs in the industry. And there is a camaraderie that develops around that because all of us, all, well, not all of us, if you came from another company to Prime and you already had your CDL, then, then you don't, you're not necessarily in that group. But the vast majority of us, came to prime not knowing shit about fuck when it comes to trucking and we went to that campus in and ate those shitty eggs y'all know what i'm talking about <laughs> the 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 food at campus in is in no way comparable to the food at the terminal the food at campus in is now i'm grateful for it don't get me wrong i was broke as shit when i came to prime and i was very grateful to have those struggle meals 
but most most if not 97 percent of prime drivers came to campus in had to go through the stress of you know basically the your whole your whole permit process your psd training is a job interview the job interview before you get to the campus in in, in springfield or if you go to pitson or springfield or us uh, salt lake city and they have their own hotel situations but if you come in your real interview doesn't really start until you get checked in and get going and it's a it's a stressful it used to be a lot more stressful because back in the day when i came in you didn't even have your cdl permit before you got to springfield you went and tested for the permit in springfield all together you got on a shuttle and you went and you got a Missouri permit didn't matter what state you were from you gave up your regular driver's license once you passed the written test in Springfield and you got a Missouri permit and then once you pass the uh, you know skills back and driving all that stuff pre-trip test and actually got your CDL you got a Missouri CDL and then you had to take that to your state and exchange it back for your normal st uh, state CDL. I believe there was like, I believe the states were like, ah, uh -uh, this ain't gonna fly. And so that does, that's not the way it worked. Also back in that day, you didn't take your drug test or your physical until you got to, to prime. So for a lot of people, there was that whole added stress of, can I pass the drug test? You know, they left their families, got on a bus, and went to Springfield. I remember, man, I remember all kinds of little whispers around nooks and crannies at Campus N of, I don't know why they're taking so long to approve me. I, I, I thought I was clean. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was just a lot of stress involved. And there's, but this, there still is to this day. So all prime drivers know that when you encounter another prime driver, they went through that long PSD process and then they went through the very long TNT process um, oftentimes with a trainer who you know maybe didn't shower I mean a lot of guys have a lot of people come in with good trainers um, but there's a lot of bad trainers too mine was absolutely god-awful in my PSD phase and I, I've got a, one of my best performing videos is about that nightmare um, but there's because we have a very long process that's required until you actually, before you actually get a truck at Prime, there's this way that we all relate. And also we have very big, very extravagant terminals where a lot of camaraderie happens that probably doesn't happen at most trucking companies. Um, so there's a there's a big social aspect to prime that you probably don't see with most trucking companies so my point is you call it cultish or whatever you want to call it i'm just trying to explain from an insider's perspective why i think that exists um because we all probably feel a little bit more connected in a part of something than most trucking companies feel and, it, and i'm just explaining the reasons for it um, the, at least the reasons that I see for it. So that's kind of my view there. I, I there a lot of a lot of prime drivers take that a little bit too far, and they become very protective and very defensive about the company itself, and they become very they go too far emotionally in getting involved in other YouTubers or other people that aren't with Prime, being critical of Prime. Um, I've talked about that a lot on YouTube, but I don't talk about it as if, you know, oh, fuck that guy for for daring. Don't you dare talk shit about Prime. No, I don't feel that way at all. Um, I I have bitched on YouTube about in, it, gross inaccuracies. And there are a lot on YouTube, very gross inaccuracies. One of the things I really respected about what this guy Truck said in this video um, is that the least leasing with prime is not a scam and he states the obvious it is all as described 
when you go through orientation, when you raise your hand, they ask you, you're gonna be company or you're gonna be lease. And then you go through the whole process and you go over to success leasing, you take all the classes. It is exactly as described. And you are given a lease, a contract that's sent to you, a freight contract and a lease for your truck. And you can, you can do your own due diligence and sign it. It's all spelled out in great detail. There is nothing hidden. Believe me, I've got multiple trucks. I've read a lot of contracts from Prime. I have a new contract with Prime uh, to haul freight that I had to, because once you own a truck, you have to sign an annual uh, renewal to, to haul freight. So if you didn't do your due diligence and read all that, and you got yourself into something that you're gonna get over your head on, um, then you're probably disgruntled about it, but that's your own damn fault. And he acknowledges that. So I do take issue with the claims of, well, Prime misled me about the lease or Prime wasn't clear about this or that. Look, it's all very clear. I was not led astray on anything. Um, does that mean that things can really work against you through no fault of your own? Yes, P things can, um, things can. In fact, one of the things that and I'm kind of bloviating here, but I just want to make this point really quick. One of the things that I think there's not a good enough safety net involved with Prime is like lemon trucks, for example. And there are some lemon trucks. Um, I've known a few people that just spent six, six weeks or longer just being absolutely put through the grinder over trucks that don't, um, that just never, you know, never come out of it. There's constantly in the shop, brand new trucks. Uh, and so, you know, they may get breakdown pay or something, but that doesn't, that doesn't cover, um, you were not out here to get, you know, a thousand dollars a week in breakdown pay or whatever. It, well, I don't remember because I don't get breakdown pay, but, uh, and they get run out of the industry. You know, th th there's just, I, there was another driver I knew who just got stuck in the Northwest company driver. And for about seven or eight weeks never got more than like six or 700 miles a week every week i'm telling you like this guy just got royally screwed he had issues where he was in the shop the truck was constantly breaking down um, loads were canceling it's just one thing after another and so for literally his first like t almost two months he never got more than a you know 300 dollar check 400 dollar check um, and it drove him out of the industry. It, so he came into the industry and drove him right out. I feel like there's not a good enough safety net for things that happen when it's truly, literally no fault of their own. So, you know, there's, I have criticisms of things like that. Um, but anyway, so hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of my perspective of kind of why there's that emotional connection maybe. Um, and again, I do think people take it way too far. People take it way too seriously. There's going to be people who troll prime drivers. We're the biggest refrigerated carrier. <laughs> Not the biggest carrier, but the biggest refrigerated carrier. We're a mega. Look, people are going to talk shit, man. You got to be able to take that. Uh, <laughs> it just, and we got a lot of stupid drivers too. We got a lot of great drivers, but we got a lot of stupid drivers because we've got a lot of fucking drivers. You know what I mean? So don't get so butt hurt over it, you know? And besides, guys like this guy trucks, again, they're just gonna take your comments and use it because that's what they do. And it works and I get it and it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Um, so all that said, let me get to my advice for this guy trucks because <laughs> I was involved kind of unplanned and unscripted in sort of a, Wild Beard Trucking and myself and this guy trucks, this was not something we were communicating on, but a few months ago, we kind of were all doing this. Is Prime selling to Hirschbach? Is Hirschbach selling to Prime? Uh, because there were rumors out there, but we were obviously playing off of it. And there was sort of some comments between us where it's like, oh, you know, here we go. You're There you go. It's my turn now. You know what I mean? Um, Here's my advice to this guy, Trucks. If you really want to milk the prime 
headlines. I don't, don't want to say it's clickbait because your video actually was what your title said. But if you really want to milk that, trust me on this, bro. You need to put female prime ink driver in your title. <laughs> or Highway Diamond. I mean, there's YouTubers at Prime that literally put female truck driver in every single title. I do not subscribe to that. It drives me crazy. Uh, but whatever. They to each their own. Do what you do what you're gonna do. Even show some cleavage, man. Like find some way to show some cleavage and put female truck driver, Prime Inc. Uh, in in your title or highway diamond or something like that, then you'll really, really be able to milk that, uh, milk that prime traffic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just a thought, dude. I'll tell you this, man. I used to team with my wife. And if I ever used my wife in a thumbnail or, you know, talked about husband, wife team, or she drove and she did this. If I mentioned she, her wife, female, Dude, that those videos always just like pfft. it just is what it is, man. In in that part of the trucking industry, the the YouTube game, it's really stacked against us old dudes. We ain't we ain't got we ain't got that hook. You know what I mean? <laughs> we just ain't got it. So uh, anyway, that's my that's my thing. Go again. If you like that kind of garbage, go subscribe to this guy, Trucks, uh, and watch his videos on Prime. Uh, he's he's loving it and having fun with it. I love watching it because, or listening to it, because it's just, it cracks me up. It cracks me up that there's so many Prime drivers who don't understand that going and trashing them in their comments is only giving them more traffic and only providing them more topics and content to get more traffic. Uh, and it's going to continue. Me saying it's not going to stop it from happening. It's going to continue because there's drivers out there that just don't get it. They just don't get it. They think somehow if they go leave a comment just... I'm gonna. I'm just gonna let you know how I feel. That somehow that's gonna change. Like people who come to my channel and comment and say, "You're not making any money, so you should go do X, Y, and Z." It's like, how can you come to me and tell me that I just don't know that I'm not making money? Um, or you know, anyway. Like I look, I delete. In fact, my comments run through moderation because I have zero tolerance for it. I used to let it be a free-for-all. Nah, man. If you're just going to talk pointless shit in my comments, it doesn't mean I don't let uh, you know comments that are critical. Or There's a lot of comments that are critical, even in the last video. A lot of people didn't like that. I don't like when people block people in. Not a lot, but there were a few. Um, and I'll let those go. But if you're just like hating and talking just stupid shit I, like the comments not i'm not i don't have time for you i don't like i, I i've got other th life is just i got other things other things that are more important to me but just know that if you're most trucking youtubers ah, not most but a lot of trucking youtube especially the ones that are kind of troll level like this guy trucks <laughs> you trying to go in and somehow prove a point by trying to bash the YouTuber when it's someone like this guy trucks uh, trust me you're not you're not winning anything you're not winning anything nothing you're you're just wasting your time in fact that youtuber is winning by using you to create more traffic and content and I think it's fucking hilarious so anyways, all right, guys, be safe, make good decisions, always drive, thrive, talk to y'all soon.